Don't forget to like and subscribe to Jolie Knott's Crochet. Share with your friends. Hit that little notification bell so you can get notified when new patterns release. All our videos are available in left and right-handed tutorials. Hi everyone, welcome back to Jolie Knott's Crochet. I'm Crystal and today we are going to be making the Aurelia tank top. Now this tutorial will be for the adult sizes and keep your eyes out for the kid sizes coming out is available. I will go ahead and leave the link in the description box below for both sizes to the written pattern as well as the link to the YouTube tutorial. This is going to come in size small to five extra large. We are using a two weight yarn for this project. So it's a perfect layering tank top to wear a camisole underneath um, and really just kind of have something light and airy to wear. The length on it is completely customizable to the size that you like. So how we're gonna do this is starting first on the straps. We're gonna be making one part of the strap first, increasing to where the neckline and the armpit are. And then we are going to connect it on the top and work the other side. It's a really simple three row repeat. I am not gonna be making a full size for this. I'm just gonna be making a small one. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and leave scrolling on the screen the amount of repeats or the amount of stitches that you are going to need to be doing to be able to make yours. All right, so like I said, the yarn that we are going to be using is a two weight yarn. The yarn that I'm using for this project is the Hobie Twister in solid. It is a 55% acrylic, I'm sorry, a 55% cotton and a 45% acrylic. These come in skeins of 437 yards. For the size that I made, the two extra large, I made, I used 610 yards of this yarn. This is what I have of my second cake. So it works up really fast. It doesn't take a lot of yardage to do. And it's a really simple, easy project. I plan on making a whole lot more for the warm weather here in Los Angeles. So the hook that we're using for this project is a 4.25 millimeter hook or a size G. So that's what I'm going to use. So let's go ahead and get started on this project, okay? So the first thing that you're gonna do is create a slip knot. Now, depending on the size that you are making, you are either going to chain anywhere from eight to 10 stitches. So I'll leave scrolling on the screen how many stitches you need. I'm just going to chain six, because like I said, I'm just going to be making a very small one swatch for you guys. Now we are going to half double crochet into the second chain from the hook. And in each chain after that. Once you've finished row one, getting started on row two, we're gonna chain two, that's not going to count as a stitch, turn your work, and now we're gonna double crochet into every stitch. So if you chained eight, you should have seven stitches across. If you chained 10, you should have nine stitches across. That is the end of row two. Getting started on row three, we're gonna chain three. That does not count as a stitch. Turn your work, and now we're going to treble crochet. So wrapping our yarn twice into each stitch all the way across. And these are your three repeat rows. 
So you're going to repeat rows one through three. So half double crochet row, double crochet row, and a treble crochet row for the amount of the beginning strap that we're creating. So right now we are currently working on just this beginning strap before we start the increases. So you're going to repeat rows one through three until you have a total of anywhere from six to nine rows. So for example, a size small is going to have six rows. So one, two, three, and then you're going to repeat one, two, three again. A size medium is going to have seven rows. So you're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the half double crochet row again. So once you finish your beginning top panels, whether you made six rows, seven, eight, or nine rows, we're just going to pretend three is the amount of rows that I need. Say that your next row is a half double crochet row. Well, we're going to start our increases here. And the way that we're doing our increases is I am going to chain one and I'm placing two stitches into my first stitch and two stitches into my last stitch. So every row is going to repeat. I'm sorry, every row is going to increase by two stitches per row. Now, if your top panel ended on a double crochet row, then your first increase row is going to be a treble crochet. So you're going to place two treble crochets in the beginning stitch and two treble crochets in the ending stitch. So just like this, you're increasing two stitches per side. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do three increase rows, but I'm going to leave scrolling up on the screen until you have a total of anywhere from seven to 14 increase rows, not including your top panel, but your increase rows. So pay attention carefully. If the words on the screen do not make sense to you, I apologize, but you can go ahead and find the link to the written pattern in the description box below. Remember, we are increasing by one stitch on each side. So you are going to have two stitches in your first stitch and two stitches in your last stitch. If your top panel ended on a half double crochet row, then your first increase row is going to be a double crochet row. So we're just going half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet. So if you have nine top panel rows and nine increase rows, it doesn't really matter exactly which, like where it starts. Say for example, you're on a trip. I'm stopping my increases now on a treble crochet row or somebody else is stopping their increase rows on a double crochet row. That doesn't matter because your next row is always going to be the next one in the sequence. So I have here now, oops, my treble crochet row yeah. as my last increase row. So I did three top panel rows and I'm doing three increase rows. Each row, again, like I said, is increasing by two stitches. Once you are finished with your top panel rows and your increase rows, your stitch count, I'll go ahead and leave your stitch count scrolling on the screen for how many stitches you have at the end of your increase rows. Now 
Now when you finish out your increase rows, just like I have done here, it should look like this. Larger, obviously, so it should technically look like this. So from your top to right here. Okay, so now you're going to cut your yarn, only you're not going to fasten it because we're actually going to slip stitch. And you're going to leave approximately a 6 to 8 inch tail so that you have room to weave in the ends. Go ahead and use a stitch marker so you don't lose your stitch there. And we're going to leave it just like that for now. Now what we're going to do is attach our yarn to the starting end where we where we began. And the way that I do that is I just use a magic knot. And this is where I'm going to begin. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into that first chain right there and pull up a loop. And now I'm going to make this top piece, I'm going to chain one before my half double crochet, it does not count as a stitch. And I'm going to half double crochet into every single chain and my stitches should be the same. So if I started with seven stitches, I should continue having seven stitches because we're doing that first step that we just completed, we're doing it exactly the same to create the top of the back panel. So if you had seven beginning rows, then you should have seven beginning rows on this side. If you had seven increase rows, then you should have seven increase rows on this side. So I'm going to make the back of this exactly the same as I made the front but I'm not going to cut my yarn yet. So don't cut your yarn. And then you're going to make two pieces exactly the same. So let me finish this out. We're going to be chaining once you finish the second side of the top back panel to create space for our underarms. Okay, so once you finish your increase rows, it should look something like this. I'll also go ahead and leave a photo on the screen of what it should look like. Right, now the next thing we're gonna do, depending on your size, you are going to chain anywhere between 11 and 23 stitches. I'm just going to chain three so that I can show you that on this small piece that we're doing. So one, two, three. It will be an odd number. Now I'm going to take, making sure that my chain is not twisted, I am going to go ahead and slip stitch it to the first chain on the other I'm sorry, the first stitch on the other side, and that will be opposite of where your stitch marker is. So we're going to find that first stitch of our last increase row on the other side and slip stitch together. Go ahead and chain two secure. Now we can cut our yarn here, leaving a long enough tail to sew in. So your first panel should look like this. Again, larger, of course, but it should look like this. And you should have your chains on one side. The other side should not be attached. And you should have your stitch marker with your unfastened end on the other. So you're going to make two of them exactly like that. So it should look like this as far as the bigger one goes 
and then for the underarms you'll just have that chain. So I'm going to go ahead and make my second one and then I'll meet you back to show you how to attach them together and how to get started on all of our body rounds. Okay, so now that we have two pieces, remember we have our chain slip stitched. One side has a stitch marker and one side does not. So we're gonna put both of our pieces together where the, slip, uh, the stitch markers are on the inside and the chains are on the outside. Making sure that you're looking at the front or the same side of your last row so you don't get mixed up. What we're gonna do is right here where we didn't fasten off, we are going to put our hook right back into that space and we're gonna slip stitch it to the other side where the stitch marker is not. So slip stitch, and this is now the center of your neckline. And you can fasten and weave in those ends. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And we're just fastening them together, or slip stitching, and then fastening your yarn. And this is what your work should look like. Now both sides of your work, not there's not a right or a wrong side or an inside or an outside or anything like that. The back is going to look exactly the same as the front, okay? Now we're going to get started on the body rounds. So with this piece here, this is what we've created, is our top pieces with our chains, okay? Now we're going to get started on these body rounds. Now depending on the last row that you finished, you could have a half double crochet, you could have a double crochet as your last row, you could have a treble crochet as your last row. So whatever is coming into the next sequence is what you're going to start your body rounds with. So for example, the last row in my sequence here is a treble crochet. So I am going to start with a half double crochet. Now this is going to take a little bit of time to explain, so have some patience with me because it's actually pretty difficult to explain all the different sizings in a video. And again, if you don't understand, I truly apologize. It's something that I try to do for you guys, but if it's not understandable, you are just going to need to go ahead and follow the link below for the written pattern. Okay, so you're going to find your middle stitch in your armpit. So for example, if you have 11 chains, your middle stitch is gonna be your fifth one. I only have two chains here, so my middle stitch is going to be my second. I'm sorry, I only have three chains, so my middle stitch is going to be my second. Now I'm gonna attach my yarn to my middle stitch, my middle chain. Now, because I am working a half double crochet row, this row is a little bit different than the other ones. So how I'm going to start here is with a standing single crochet. If you are starting with a half, with a double crochet row, you're gonna start with a standing double crochet. If you are starting with a treble crochet row, you are going to start with a standing treble crochet. Now this beginning row for the half double crochets only are the only one, it's the only one that does not have a stitch increase. I'll show you where the stitch increase is on my next run around. Okay, so if you're doing the half double crochet, you're starting with a single crochet. If you are starting with a double crochet row, you're going to start with a double crochet. If you're starting with a treble crochet row, again, you're starting with the treble crochet. Now into the next stitch, we are going to place 
half double crochets all the way around until you get to the next midpoint. So go ahead and actually place a stitch marker in your middle stitch on your armpit on the other side. So I am half double crocheting. You could be doing a treble crochet or a double crochet all the way until we get up to that stitch marker. When you get to your midpoint, either at your neckline or the back midpoint, we're not adding any stitches. We're going straight from the last stitch on one panel into the first stitch on the next. And when you get to your stitch marker under the next armpit, that's where we're increasing. So we are increasing on our sides and everything else is the same. Now remember I told you that the half double crochet row is a little bit different than the other, right, other rows. So all I'm going to do here is place a single crochet into that space. If you are working a half double, I'm sorry, if you're working a double crochet row or a treble crochet row as the first row in your armpit, you're going to do a double crochet, chain three, double crochet, or treble crochet, chain three, treble crochet. The half double crochet row is different. So this is what our increases are going to be looking like. with the chain threes in that middle stitch. And then you can just keep continue to move your stitch marker up if you need it. Now you're just gonna continue your stitches down until the point where you began. So again, I'm working my half double crochets. You might be working your double crochets or your treble crochets. And also again, I know it seems really confusing because there's so many different stitches and sizes to work with. So again, I apologize that it might not be the simplest pattern to follow in video because they're all just a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and continue my stitches until I get right to the beginning. Okay. So here I am all the way around in my half double crochet row. And the only thing I'm going to do here is just go ahead and slip stitch to my first single crochet to join. Now if yours started with a double crochet or a treble crochet row, remember on the other side we did a double crochet or a treble crochet, chain three, and then double crochet or treble crochet into that same stitch, that's, we're going to finish that out here. So when you're joining your double crochet or your treble crochet row, you are going to double crochet or place your stitch into the same stitch that you started with, chain one, and then half double crochet to join. Now, if you don't understand what I mean, hang tight until I finish my next row is double crochet, and then you'll see exactly how it works, okay? So here's where I've slip stitched to join. My next row is a double crochet row. So I am going to chain two, and now I'm turning my work. Don't forget to turn your work. Because we are working in the rounds, we need to turn our work so we can keep our, um, texture in our pattern going properly. Our first stitch we're going to work into is the single crochet. So we're going to double crochet into the single crochet. It's going to kind of seem like you're working backwards, but you're not. And now we're going to double crochet into every stitch 
all the way around or all the way till you get to your next stitch marker. Okay, here I am at my stitch marker and I'm going to be working my increase. So if you remember from the first row, if you had a double crochet or half double crochet row, I am placing a double crochet into the marked stitch, chaining three, and placing another double crochet into the same stitch. Now if you need your stitch marker, you can go ahead and move your stitch marker up to your chain three space. And now you're going to continue on with your double crochets going back around to the beginning and I will teach you how to join in the double crochet and the treble crochet rows which are different than just the half double crochet row. These double crochet rows will increase your stitches by two stitches per row. Your double crochets will always be worked into the single crochet. So you'll have one extra stitch on each side because there are two double crochets worked into one single crochet. Okay, we're almost here at the beginning again. And remember I told you I would teach you how we were going to join that. And the reason we're joining the way that I'm going to show you is that it sets you up to work into the chain space that we just created. So what we're going to do is your last stitch is going to be a double crochet into the same place you started. And now we're going to chain one and we're going to work a half double crochet into your first double crochet. So this kind of join is replacing your chain three space. Now in order to work our treble crochet row, what we're going to do is chain three because treble crochet row comes after our double crochet row and turn our work. We're going to work our first treble crochet over the join. Oops. We're going to work our first treble crochet over the join. And when we come back around, we'll add our second one and our half double crochet, our single crochet. When we come back around, we will do our chain and our half double crochet join. So go ahead and work your treble crochets all the way until you get to your next stitch marker. And I'll meet you there and we will work our increase. Okay, so now that I'm at my increase point at one armpit, I have my marked stitch here. This is my chain three space. So my treble crochet row is going to have into that chain three space, a treble crochet, chain three, and another treble crochet. And then you're gonna work your treble crochets all the way back around until you get to the other side. And I'll show you how to work the join here. Okay, so now that I have made it back to where we begin, I'm going to place my last treble crochet right into that same join where we first started our, our uh, round. And to close this up, remember we're chaining one and placing a half double crochet into our first stitch. So from here, when we do our increase rows and we're doing our half double crochet row, we are going to chain one and turn our work and into our join and also over here into our chain three space, 
Remember how down here we just started with a single crochet? That's what we're gonna do up here. So we're just starting with a single crochet and then we're gonna half double crochet into every stitch up to our next increase point. So let me half double crochet into every stitch. I'll meet you back at your increase point. Okay, so I've made it to my increase point on the other side. I've got a half double crochet into my last treble crochet from the round before. And now I'm just going to place a single crochet into our chain three space. And if it's helpful, go ahead and place a stitch marker so in the next row, you don't just do treble crochets over it on accident. Now we're just gonna go straight to the other side and start half double crocheting into every stitch back to the beginning. So I will meet you back at the beginning. All right, here I am back at the beginning where we started and I'm just going to slip stitch to my single crochet to join. Chain two and turn my work and now I'm going to double crochet into my single crochet and this is where you are now going to begin to repeat your half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet rows. Now you're going to repeat that really anywhere from like six to nine times depending on the length that you want or until your increase point here falls right about or just below your um, your belt line. So it's customizable, of course, in your length. I personally did my re five repeats, but I have some testers that did nine repeats. So it just depends on the length that you want. And you will notice as it keeps growing, this is going to keep getting wider and it's not as noticeable right now but the sides are gonna keep getting longer and it's gonna have this curve here, okay? So you're gonna to continue to increase. And then the last round that you should be doing for your increase is a treble crochet round. And then once, we, once you have the length that you want, making sure that your treble crochet round is the last round of your body increases, that's where we're gonna begin our split. So the first row of our split is gonna be our half double crochet row. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the double crochet and the treble crochet row, and then I'm gonna show you how we are going to split them up. Okay, so once you get to the length that you want. Let's just pretend that this is the length that my doll wants. And this is where her belt line is. And now we're gonna make the split. So we're splitting our front, this is the bottom of our front and our back pieces, and we're no longer increasing. So your last row of the split should be a treble crochet row, and that's what I have showing here. And here's how we're gonna begin our split. We're gonna chain one, and remember we're turning our project. So the first stitch on this side, which is only going to be here, so after your treble crochet, then you're gonna do your repeats, of course. Half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. Du half double crochet. So the row sequence after our split is half double crochet, double crochet, and then treble crochet, those three same rows. The first row of half double crochet only is going to have a half double crochet into your chain space and then a half double crochet all the way across into every stitch until you get to the end of your row. Your last half double crochet will fall into the chain space. So over here, your last half double crochet will be into that chain space 
and then you're gonna put your stitch marker there because once you finish the length desired that you want, remember we're splitting it. So now we're just working back and forth rows on either the front or the back. So that's gonna grow to the desired length that you want. And then you'll turn your work around, reattach your yarn at your marked space, and then make the back or the front exactly just like the other side. So repeat rows one, two, and three, half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet. The first row of your split is your half double crochet row. And then continuing on, you're gonna work however many repeats you want on one side, then join your yarn and work the same thing on the other side. Now remember I said we're not increasing anymore. So only that first row is gonna have a stitch into the chain space, and then we don't have chain spaces anymore. So your count is gonna be exactly the same. Your first stitch is always gonna be on top of the first stitch. Your last stitch is always gonna be on top of your last stitch. And then you're gonna end that on a half double crochet row, okay? Hopefully that has been useful enough for you, understanding enough for you. Um, if there are any issues with what I'm saying or it's not as understandable, you can join the Jolie Knots Crochet community on Facebook and we'll be able to help answer your questions there. I have a lot of comments in the sections, or I'm sorry, in the videos, and so it's hard for me to go back and forth and try to answer everybody's questions, but the Jolie Knots Crochet Community Group is really, really amazing about helping with questions, or if you are able to follow the written patterns better, then go ahead and download the written pattern, and again, I'll leave the link in the description box below, okay? Thank you everybody for watching Jolie Knots Crochet. Again, I'm Crystal. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram under Jolie Knots Crochet. Join the Jolie Knots Crochet community on Facebook and show us what you've created.